Hello students, and welcome back to Hexit Education. Today we'll be continuing from last episode, our discussion of the battle towers that uh, exist through Hexit. Um, we were talking at first about the two types of what are commonly called the ruined battle towers. Now, they, these, these towers are distinguished from regular battle towers in that, that they do not contain uh, tower bosses uh, at all. Uh, there, there are two types of them. The first one is right behind me. This, this is uh, sometimes called the holy battle tower. Uh, because it has a lot of holes in it, and it comes in, in the same same uh, forms as the regular ones. As this one is mossy cobblestone, you also come in, in sandstone or, or smooth stone, or or, or even netherrack. Well, that, that's relatively rare, especially in the overworld. Um, one of the complications that, that that arises from from having the uh, this type of ruined tower is because there's a lot, a lot of holes in it. There can be holes in the floor and even in the stairs. So I recommend bring bring with you uh, some some dirt or cobblestone, uh, some some way of moving between the floors if the stairs are not in place. So just like last time, we're going to go in with diamond armor, and I, I've got a, a diamond giant sword here. I am still going to going to keep on. I mean, even though it's not quite fair. Uh, 10 of these hard canisters. So if my health, health drops below uh, 10 here, you, you'll, you'll know that I would normally be dead if I wasn't using these in the first place. If I actually die, then I think I over overestimate how difficult this is. So without further ado, uh, let's head into this one and see what we can find. Okay, just like regular, you go in, oh, there's no spawn on this floor. Okay, oh, there's ice right there, that's a little unusual. I guess we're in a partially ice biome. Yeah, and we got some missing stairs. So the key, just like an A battle tower, is you cannot stay still. You gotta keep moving. That's as you can. Some may contain spawners, some may I mean some floors may contain may contain spawners, some may not. One unfortunate thing is because there's a lot of holes in it, a, a lot of the holes are actually in the, in the ceiling, so you can get light levels uh, coming in sufficient to make that make the uh, spawners not spawn mobs. But you can't guarantee you can't rely on that really. Yeah, like I said, some are easier than others. Um, for some reason, I've actually f found a higher preponderance of these of these uh, ruined battle towers of this type to contain blaze spawners, and um, th those can be especially tricky. However, if you haven't been to the Nether yet, <clears throat> or if you haven't found a fortress in the Nether, it can be a very valuable source of blaze rods. Yeah, I think we lucked out. I think the light levels in this are sufficient that we're not getting much many mob spawning. Oh, wow. Missed that. Totally missed that. Okay, so let's get to the next floor. Oh, I think, yeah, I'm hearing blazes. Okay, let me get this here. Oh, creeper spawner. That could have been difficult. It's probably another, another thing you can get in these ruined towers. It, it, it kind of gives the illusion that you know, there's a reason this thing was ruined. It was blown up by its inhabitants. Oh, hello, Mr. Blaze. Okay, that one's down. I think we're at the top. No, we're not at the top floor. We're close to it. See, if we're getting higher, just like with any battle tower, you get more and more holes in the floor. The difference here being that the holes are also including the, st including the stairs. And the, and the blazes, of course, you can fly, so they don't have to worry about falling through the the holes in the floor. Oh, okay, we're on the top level, and you should see <clears throat> there's a there's a conspicuous absence of of a guardian here. Cool. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna go back down and pick up all the, all these chests, and I'll give you the loot recap. Okay, so in keeping with the idea that this is a ruined tower and possibly that someone has already been there, the pickings were very very slim. Uh, we we got a little bit of bread, we got some hoes, a hoe and axe string, a little bit of iron, some eggs, some 
wheat and some seeds. So this is the kind of thing you'd want early in the game to start off uh, maybe a farm or something, but not terribly useful in the in the mid game. But as you saw, this was not terribly difficult to get through, even though there were there was a, there were blazes in there. So I think your best bet when you come across those blazes is try and make a, a at least a some type of blaze farm, at least a, a small one, just so you can get get a couple blazes together and get some blaze rods. Oh, a very important note. It is not uncommon to find empty chests in there. I, I, I looted including these 11 chests out of that tower, and this is all I got. So a lot of these were actually empty. So don't think it's because someone's already been there. It's not, not unusual to find empty chests in this type of tower. Okay, moving on, I'm, I'm going to show you the, the second type of ruined tower, which is characterized by um, the same, same kind of a uh, sort of blocked and uh, um, whole, holy appearance, but it's not nearly as tall. So, be right back. Okay, and I'm back. So, uh, this is an example of a, of a ruined battle tower of the second type. It is characterized by having only one or maybe three at most floors. It does, however, still have spawners inside it. This one in particular happened to spawn inside a, a, a mountain village but it shouldn't pose too much difficulty. So just like before, we're going in with, 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 sort of with diamond level armor. It's probably overkill, but it, it's a, might as well be safe than sorry. I'm also bringing some blocks with me, especially because these, these towers, when, when they spawn in these kind of environments, can leak uh, water or even lava sometimes into them. So let's head upstairs and see what we find. Okay, so if I can get to that. My parkour skills are not great, so I'm, I'd am i rather use blocks than try and jump. Okay, and sometimes you can actually look up look up at the top and see if there's another chest, but there usually isn't. And they're usually in the same position, so, yep, this is all of it. And make sure there's no other spawners up there, so I think we're clear. So let's see what we got. Only two floors in, the, in this, this one. Yeah. And, and you feel free to go over this way and check if there's another floor, but it's pretty rare that it, it, you get it get buried levels. The, the, these these ruined things are fairly self self contained. Yeah, yeah. See, I, I that's dirt over there. Okay, so we got seeds, eggs, bread and bone and some iron tools so about the same level as as the other ruined tower which makes sense <laughs> okay now, now, now we've done the easy ones i'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to move on to one of the, one of the more difficult type, types of uh, of battle towers actually fairly rare to find these in the overworld but i managed to find two in this hexit map and we're back Okay, so like as I said before, this is actually a very rare thing to find in, in the overworld. This is a netherrack tower. Now, the, the unusual thing about, about netherrack towers in the overworld is that whenever they spawn, they always spawn as reverse towers like this. So this is a reverse netherrack battle tower. The, the reason being that um, the, the, at, at, at most of the things that I, I could spawn inside a netherrack tower in the nether uh, wouldn't be able to spawn in the overworld. So it has to be self-contained uh, on in, in, in the overworld. So, what is a reverse battle tower? Well, a reverse battle tower is kind of what it sounds like. It is a instead of a normal battle tower, which goes from the ground level up, it starts from essentially ground level and works down. This particular one is is fairly exposed because it sort of spawned in between these two mountains here. You can get a better look at it. But as you can see from this profile here. It is just as tall as, 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 a, as, an, as, an, as a regular bow tower, only it goes down instead of up. So, uh, one other thing that distinguishes the, the reverse battle towers from regular battle towers is that they do not contain uh, the, 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 the tower guardians, the, the golems, which, which is fortunate, because one of the other features about them is they have no windows, so because they, they, go, they go underground. Oh, you hear that? Things are already starting to spawn in there. Okay, so, and, and, and uh, one of the main dangers is that if you go in there and you run into trouble, you have no way of easily jumping out. Okay, that camera trouble jumping up this thing. So what do you do? You head towards the top. 
bring yourself some dirt or similar material. And get over there. Okay, another thing is that it's not uncommon to find soul sand as a surface at some of these. Not 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 always, but sometimes. But um, that one, similar to the ruin towers, there's no real need to uh, quickly loot everything as the um, as as the, the battle towers do not have a golem, so you don't have to worry about the thing blowing up on you. Another thing that distinguishes the, the netherrack towers is that they use glowstone for lighting instead of torches. So if you need an early source of glowstone, this might be a decent place. Although I will say these are actually quite dangerous to be in. Yep, this is actually a complete uh, soul sand tower, so this is going to be fun. Same rules apply. Get in there, kill everything as quickly as you can. Drop torches, and I'm being attacked by something I can't see. Cave spider. And generally, you will not have time to use a bow, so just get in there and spam your sword. Oh crap, I just fell down a lot. Oh no, oh no, oh no. I get. Oh, I'm in the wrong staircase. I don't want to be down here. Crap, crap. Because I'm on soul sand, it's very hard to move around in here. I light it up a little bit. I mean, poison, but my, my armor's taking care of the. Poison. Oh, by the way, I am wearing scale armor, unenchanted. For this, should be enough, I think. But I can barely move at all. I gotta get out of here. This is not good. What the? What? I'm not even sure what's going on right now. Getting a lot of lag. Come on, come on. I almost go so far as to say this is that Morse is more frustrating than difficult. Oh, poisonous quicksand spider. That was fun. Oh, no. Skeleton. Uh. Oh, no. I fell down again. Okay, I have no idea what floor I'm on at this point. I could be on the bottom for all I know. Okay, wow. Oh, not again. Okay, I think I finally hit the bottom. Not that it's actually a good thing. But wow, yeah. Okay, wander down. I can hear. Oh, it's infernal. I can hear the, the spiders above me. Oh no, I didn't want to do that actually, but that actually works for for a moment. Okay, so this is not going well so far. I gotta keep moving. Wait, why can't I? Oh, is this thing too low? Yeah, I think it is. I've had that happen before. Okay, someone's shooting at me. Ah! What, where, the, where did that lava come from? Very hard to tell if I'm being poisoned or if I'm being attacked. And okay, this is uh, it's not a common feature of the Netherrack towers, especially in the ones in Overworld. But in, the un in Nether, it's not not unusual to find things like this. 
where you get lava coming into the, the battle tower, giving you that just that extra degree of difficulty on top of something that's already somewhat difficult. Yeah. Yeah, for some reason these glowstone blocks are not quite spawning in the right place, so I can't get through them. Oh crap, come on. Ah, knocked down again? I think I'm actually safer at the bottom of this thing. Unfortunately, the longer I'm here, the more things spawn upstairs. Let me just drop down. Hello. I go straight for the spawners this time. Get away, get away. Spawner down. Okay, going back up. Up, oh, there's a spider up there, and I can't get through. Come on, come on. Skeleton. Oh, that, that infernal had knocked me down before. Got him. Oh, and that's an infer another infernal. That's a blast off infernal zombie with Ender. I kill him fast before he teleports. Too late. One, one down. Wow, it's a lot. It's a lot of arrows in the wall over there. Oh crap! I fell again. It's so hard to tell if I'm, if I'm being poisoned or if I'm being poisoned and attacked. Okay, let's head back up. I think, uh, come on. Yeah, I think it's that first step for some reason is a little bit hard to get through and it shouldn't be that difficult. Come on, die. No, no, no. Come on, take it down, take it down. Stop attacking me, you piece of crap. I know, ow. Okay, gotta go back upstairs. There he goes. That ender zombie. He's almost got him. Yeah, it's like glowstone blocks keep me from jumping easily. Okay, so back over here. Take this out. Yep, someone's shooting at me. Okay, I think I, I was not lost track of what floor I'm on, but I think I'm in a whoa, that's a lot of Die. Okay, I think we might be in good shape. There's a there's a cave spider that's glitched out on the on the glowstone there. Oh, th there's a hole in the thing. I don't, I don't think I did that. Oh, I'm actually I might have. All right, so okay, we got some skeletons there. Take these out. By my rough calculation, I think we're in pretty good shape. Come on. No! Ugh. Fell down again. Okay, spawner down. Okay, I think we're in good shape. I think we're, I think we actually did. I think we've cleared, managed to clear all the floors as far as I can tell. I still hear spiders, so I probably have some residuals, but I think we've, uh, we got it. Yep, okay, we made it back. Get stupid glowstone.
it's placed just so it's hard to, to step up for some reason. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go back down there and loot all that stuff, and I'll be right back with the loot recap. Whew. Okay, this is kind of unusual. Um, I, I went down past what I thought was the last floor, but there seems to be another one down here. Okay, so it looks like this one was... Uh, this one grew into the the wall, which was out of the stone. See, I'm seeing a chest pet pass there, and some spawners, and some spiders. So this is probably the source of all that noise I heard before. Okay, so just cut through this very carefully, because there's, there's lava right next to me. And... Go right here, so that this should be the last one. Just kill this. Okay. And is that... No, there's another floor beyond this? Wow. Okay, so we're not done yet. Okay, so there's a lot of lava here. And I'm not seeing... Another... Yeah, there's another chest. Wow, I'm right next to this lava flow, and it's not fun. I'm not seeing any more spawners, so I can assume this is the last floor. Oh, it's actually an aluminum gravel... Uh, uh, a little warberry bush there. Cool. So I'm gonna be careful because I want I want that bush. That, that could be quite useful to me. Always good to carry uh, blocks, dirt, or cobblestone whenever you go into one of these things. So okay. So given the fact that there is, wait a minute, is there actually? No. Okay, so I think this might be some kind of mist spawn because there's no, no, there's no doorway that leads back up. Okay. So yeah, this must have spawned partially into this wall here. One thing I'm kind of curious about. I gotta check this out here because look over this way. Okay. See that? That is stone brick, and I'm wondering why there is stone brick at level 47. Okay, we got some gold here, because stone brick is typically not part of netherrack. So I'm wondering if maybe this lead, this might connect into an underground dungeon. So I'm just, I'm just curious. I gotta see this. No, that kind of looks like. Uh, yeah, I think it's an underground dungeon. Cool. Let's just take a quick peek. Uh, we're definitely going to have a full lesson on Underground Dungeon, but we happen to find one quite by chance, so let's check it out. Yeah, this is definitely an Underground Dungeon. I recognize the architecture. Cool. So this is basically a, a series of rooms, about like 50 of them, uh, right, right underneath a... Uh, I mean, actually, it might be a dun might be a stronghold, come to think of it. No, I mean, I don't mean a... Almost, I mean, a, I mean, a better dungeon stronghold. But okay, so uh, we we found we came to the bottom of this thing. So I'm gonna head back up and give you the loot recap. Okay, so I must say that was an amazing haul. I I don't I don't think I've ever gotten a, a, a battle tower quite that good. So I think uh, it's safe to say that commensurate with the difficulty of this reverse netherrack battle tower, you get the rewards that you deserve. So we got about two and a quarter double chests full of loot out of there. Let's take a look. So in here we got some uh, geishal seeds, not too bad. We got some iron uh, weapons and tools. We got an iron dagger, including. We got some blaze rods, very useful. Although surprisingly, there were no blazes down there. I was really surprised there weren't any. I actually brought bought some fire protection potions in case I needed them, but didn't need them. I got I got, got an enchanted book here. Oh, this is actually a, a, a mistake. If you happen to come across this enchanted book 403, destroy it. It's not a real enchanted book. It's just kind of a, a glitched book. So just get rid of it. A little bit of lapis and some arrows there. Over here, we got reed pipes. That's got some legend gear. It's it's mostly a a, um, a fluff piece used to make musical notes. We got some magic essence, golden carrots. Oh, by the way, I did. Um, I, 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 I did. In fact, when I went down there, I took out all of the glowstone blocks. Now I wasn't using a luck pick or anything or a silk touch, so it's just basically what you would normally get if you use uh, regular gear. So I think I got. Uh, I'll show you how much I got in a minute. 
but I got some glow glowing bread. I got a couple electric grenades, kind of useful, some diamonds. I got six hexal essence here, very cool. I got a, a headband of valor from Legend Gear, also nice. Life grenade, kind of useful, health potion. And I got five mystic seeds. I have never seen these before. And I've been looking for them for a long time. These are incredibly rare, and now we have five of them. So once I show you this loot recap, I'm definitely going to plant one of these, because I want to see what it looks like. Yeah, hopefully it'll bloom quickly. So we also got, um, oh, this is actually a, 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 a glitch um, splash potion, so you can throw that out when you get a chance. We got a fire staff, some seeds. We've got 30 emeralds, nice. we got a water staff. We have a full hexical diamond, very cool. So this plus this, that's enough to make half of a suit of, uh, of um, hexical armor. Got a slam sword, this is one from Better Dungeons, not too bad. We got some nether wart. Now, I did not uh, harvest all the soul sand, but obviously there was a tremendous amount of soul sand in this thing. So if you get even one nether wart and uh, like nine soul sand, you'll have plenty to work with. And if you wanted to do, Brewing, so I actually got a whole brewing stand out of that. If you decide you get more than one of these things, just put them in an uncrafting table or use the sledge to get a 50% chance to get back the blaze rods from them. So, useful little trick. I got some bones, we got some sand for some reason. Uh, we got uh, some stone tools, including glaives and sides. We got some lawn uh, from off lawn, and useful as a decorative material. We got uh, carrots, and some leather. We got an ice staff, kind of cool. We have another another Gliss Enchanted book, so get, let's throw that out. We actually got a fishing pole, kind of cool, fishing rod. Some sunflower seeds, we got a stone shield, okay. And um, mostly just uh, more iron and stone tools here. And we also got meteorite boots for protection three, not too bad. We got diamond chest plate with protection two, kind of cool. Not the best thing, but if we put that in on crafting table, it'll get you back quite a few diamonds. So, okay, so in total, we got two, uh, one and a half stacks of glowstone dust out of, out of that dungeon. Very cool. This is this, this be useful down in life if you want to make redstone lamps or anything like that. So we got uh, one zombie head, kind of cool. Tokopedia, very, very, very common. We got seven diamonds in here, plus the other ones before. I think that's like uh, a dozen or so. We got a Legia bow, kind of cool if you don't have one yet. We also got a Soul Reaper. This is awesome. This is basically the it's basically the best kind of glaive that you can get. It, it, it's how do I put this? I believe you know I'll put I'll put it in the description description below here. But I believe what what this does is it, is it allows you to uh, to reap souls even if you don't right click. But I have to check on that. Uh, this thing is really useful. So we got oh we actually got thief's boots. I mean. Yeah, yeah, these are real. These are actual these boots. These, 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 we, got, we got a piece of hexagonal gear. Very cool. Okay, so we also got we also got this. We, we got a pair of scale like a pair of scale boots. So if your scale boots were damaged like mine was, you can actually get a new pair of scale boots. Excellent. We got a destruction catalyst, not my favorite thing in the world, but kind of cool. We got a cloak of distortion. Very, very cool. This is like the, one of the best teleport items you can get. We talked about this in our episode on Xeno's Reliquary. We got, we got a magic mirror from, from, from Legend Gear. We got 30, uh, 20 emeralds in here. Very cool. We got uh, five golden apples. We got a coin of fortune, which is kind of useful if you don't happen to use um, uh, meteorite tools. We have an unenchanted ender giant sword. Very nice. And we got a golden geisel. That'd be useful for reading, for reading a choco if I get two of those. And we got some pumpkins and some leather, miscellaneous stuff too. But all in all, excellent, excellent. Oh, I almost forgot. We also got a Kirknerite sword with, with sharpness one. Very nice. Not as good as a flanged ender giant sword, but not too shabby nonetheless. So, very nice haul. Uh, my armor took a bit of a beating. I'd say we got about 25% down on unenchanted scale armor. And uh, fortunately, we, we did not run into any, any anything with, with any rust infernals. Um, we also got 15 bottles of enchanting. So, in keeping with last episode, I'm just going to hit myself with these. And we see we got 34 levels out of, out of that that, that battle tower. Very nice. Okay, so be right back. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to see what this Mystic Sea actually looks like. Very, very cool. Okay, so for reference, 
over here we have the regular myst mystic shrubs that these are normal normal spawn here and over here this is what they look like normally and over here i just planted one because i wasn't sure if it was going to uh, sprout, sprout quickly or over time but it's very quickly see this this is what happens when you plant one mystic shrub here in the middle you get this sort of star pattern so it's a was it one two three so it goes four. No, it goes three out from the center in all directions. So plan that when you when you do it. Let me show you what happens over here. I'm actually curious. I I, I cleared the land out before of tall grass. So I'm serious, I'm curious what happens if you don't clear out the gr the ground around. So you can find some flat area. Uh, yeah, this will do. So I'm gonna put it down here. Okay. So cool. It 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 does uh, destroy tall grass around. Excellent. I was worried about that. But yeah, so mystic mystic shrubs. This is, it, as you know before, this is the only way you can move quote unquote mystic mystic shrubs because you, you, if you um, right click them, you get a chance to drop some stuff. If you try and break them, this part here, it destroys them. You you can't, doesn't you don't get a drop from them. You can't even shear them. The only way you can have these plant come up, up here where you want them to is to find these mystic seeds. And these are the first ones I have ever found. I've been playing Hexa for. Close to six months now. I've never found these before, so they're incredibly rare. I guess you have to find them in the high-level dungeons, like when we just we just finished. So this has been Kankidia for Hex Education. I hope, hope you guys had fun, and I am extremely pleased we, we finally found some, some mystic mystic seeds here. So um, I'll see you all next time. In the meantime, class dismissed.